Redeemer lives. The idea that Jesus never taught anything that people didn't like is just flat out wrong. Jesus continually taught the truth, and because of that, he was hated, at least by some. At least eight times in the gospel accounts, people tried to seize Jesus and kill him because of something he did or said. We're going to be thinking about those eight times in this video. First time, when Jesus called out his hometown for their unbelief occurs in Luke 4, verse 16 through 30. Jesus read from, on this occasion, Isaiah 61, verse 1 through 2, in his hometown synagogue and applied the prophecy to himself. When people started wondering what was going on, he told them, no prophet is accepted in his hometown. He then went on to mention how God cared for foreigners and not just the Jews. And when they heard that, they were filled with rage and they drove Jesus out of town. They even tried to throw him off a cliff. But the text says that Jesus passed through the crowd and he left. The second time that people tried to kill Jesus was when Jesus challenged the Pharisees' traditions about the Sabbath. Now, this occurs in, in three of the gospel accounts, in Matthew 12, in Mark 2, and in Luke 6. The Pharisees had many traditions that they followed, especially about the Sabbath day. They added these traditions along with God's Word and enforced their traditions on others. However, Jesus would have none of it. He challenged their traditions by showing that his disciples were not breaking God's law by picking grain as they walked through a field. He provided further evidence that his challenge of their traditions was right by healing a man's hand on the Sabbath. The Pharisees were so in love with their traditions that they began to plot how to destroy Jesus after he healed the man's hand on the Sabbath day. The third time that people tried to kill Jesus or started planning to kill Jesus was when Jesus placed himself above the Pharisees' level of authority in John chapter 5, verse 1 through 18. Once again, Jesus healed someone on the Sabbath. This man couldn't walk, but Jesus healed him and told him to take his mat, his bed with him. He wouldn't need it anymore. The Pharisees confronted this man and they told him, you're breaking God's law by carrying your mat on the Sabbath. The man told the Pharisees that Jesus had healed him and told him to carry his mat. The Pharisees wanted to kill Jesus because of this. Jesus told the Pharisees that their traditions were not greater than God's authority. He said that God was his father, making him equal with God. This only made them want to kill him even more. The fourth time that someone tried to kill Jesus or plotted to kill Jesus was when Jesus called himself by God's name in John chapter 8, verse 48 through verse 59. In another confrontation with the Jewish leaders, Jesus told them, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. John 8, verse 56. And the Jews mockingly replied to Jesus and said, You're not even 50 years old yet, and have you seen Abraham? Jesus responded and said, Before Abraham was, I am. John 8, verse 57 through 58. Now that got their attention. Jesus said that he is the I am, a clear reference to the Lord God, all the way back to when Moses saw the burning bush and spoke with God there, Exodus 3, verse 14, Jesus made it very clear. He is eternal and powerful, and he goes by God's own name. The Jews picked up stones to execute Jesus by stoning him to death, but the text says he just passed through the middle of the mob and left. The next time that someone tried to kill Jesus or planned to kill Jesus was when Jesus referred to himself as being God in John 10, verse 31 through 39. Once again, during the middle of a discussion, the Jews picked up stones to kill Jesus, and he asked them 
which good work from the Father they were going to kill him for. And they said, because you are a man and you are making yourself God. Jesus replied, look at the works I'm doing. Look at the miracles, the signs that I'm doing. Clearly, God must be behind the message. Jesus could do no miracles if God disapproved of his teaching. The mob ignored Jesus and tried to seize him anyway. But once again, the Lord escaped. The next time that someone was trying to kill Jesus or planning to kill him was when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead in John 11, verse 45 through 57. After Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, which proved he is the resurrection and the life, John 11, verse 25, the Pharisees met to figure out what they were going to do with Jesus. And they decided that the only course of action to preserve their power, their own power, their own authority, was to put Jesus to death, John 11, verse 53. And from this time on, they were actively looking for an opportunity to seize Jesus. And then another time that people tried to kill Jesus, or they planned to kill him, was when Jesus cleansed the temple the final time of corruption. You can read about this in Mark chapter 11 or in Luke chapter 19. When Jesus arrived in Jerusalem before his crucifixion, he went into the temple and he drove out all the merchants selling animals. These merchants were taking advantage of people by charging these huge amounts of money. They were drastically raising the prices, and basically people had to pay them. Not only were the leaders of the people robbing folks financially, but they were also robbing them spiritually. So Jesus taught every day in the temple. The leaders of the people wanted to destroy Jesus, but they couldn't because of the crowds of people gathered around Jesus listening to him. And then another time that people tried to kill Jesus or planned to kill him was when Jesus told the chief priests and the Pharisees that the kingdom of God would be taken away from them and given to another nation. This is mentioned in Matthew 21, in Mark 12, and in Luke 20. Jesus told the rulers of the people that God's kingdom would be open to other people, not just the Jews. The Jews would end up rejecting Jesus, but their rejection of the Messiah would be what sealed their fate and, as Jesus says in Luke 20, verse 18, ground them into powder. The leaders of the people wanted to seize Jesus and kill him at that very moment, but they were afraid of the people. Now, we think about these, these lessons, these eight times that people were trying to kill Jesus. If Jesus were walking around the earth today and teaching people, he would still be hated. Some would even try to kill him. How do I know that? because Jesus' followers are treated the same way. Jesus told his apostles, If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you're not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. But all these things they will do to you for my name's sake, because they do not know him who sent me. John 15, verse 18 through 21. People wanted to kill Jesus because they did not know he was God, and they did not know God. When people oppose Christ and his ways today, it is for the same reason is because they do not know God. I appreciate you watching. I appreciate appreciate you listening to another episode of Centered on Christ. Centered on Christ is emailed as an article five days a week. Click the link in the description if you want to start receiving Centered on Christ to help with your daily Bible study.